Hello everyone, this is Rahul Pawar and welcome to my YouTube channel Express Your Data. In today's video, we are going to discuss about interview questions that were asked in DBS. So this was for Tableau and SQL. So there were some questions that were asked in both. And let us thank a subscriber who has shared us his experience and his questions so that it can be of help to others who are watching. So let us get started without wasting much time. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe because regularly we'll be posting videos related to interview questions, scenarios and many more. So let us get started. So the first question was, you know, tell about your project and roles and responsibilities. So there's something that is interesting, you know, the interview directly was to the point here. He was asking, uh, what uh, have you done in the uh, project and what were your roles and responsibilities? So like I always encourage you guys to have at least, you know, one project always prepared so that, you know, when you get questions like this, you can talk talk about that in the, you know, interview or you know, in your explanation, like, you know, what kind of uh, charts you have implemented, what was uh, your design format, or what uh, were your KPIs that you have uh, implemented, implemented or any uh, functionalities uh, that you have used or developed. So the interviewer will, will be interested in knowing these details from your project. So try to focus around this area whenever you're trying to explain. Next is roles and responsibilities. Like I always tell, you know, categorize them in you know, all the important areas of a developers, like say from development plus testing, plus some SQL writing and documentation plus migration. So I want your roles and responsibilities to always revolve around this so build your story in that way okay so that will help you in every interview that you are going to attend okay so and at least you know i'm expecting when you get this question at least you should speak minimum of three minutes and you know maximum of five minutes so that you know you have enough content prepared so prepare your points accordingly and I try to explain scenarios and consume the time because this is the first question. I want you guys to stress more on this and be prepared. So next question is again one common uh, question that you know surprises many or confuses many. Like you know what should what is the safe number or you know what number should I tell like that? So how many dashboards did you uh, create till now here? Okay, so. So based on experience, I think you can add a number of, uh, uh, I would say number of uh, years into three to four, you can add. So assume each uh, dashboard is taking three to four months on an average to build. So in any year, we are building four dashboards, assume. So four into number of years, you can add like say four uh, like that and you can tell the number and uh, you can also try to you know, decrease the number of uh, dashboards that you have created by telling that, you know, in one project I was working on only migration uh, project or only, uh, you know, the enhancement project where you didn't create much of the dashboards like that. So that, you know, your number of dashboards that you have created, the count can come down. Okay. So try to have a balance here. Okay. So I would say 10 to, you know, 10 to 15 you can keep it or maybe so I don't want to give any specific number, but based on your experience, you can categorize that. Like I said, on an average, you can have uh, three to four dashboards per year, which is very safe. Three months I'm taking. So some uh, projects go up to six months also for each dashboard. And in some cases, it can be you know one day or 15 day also. So there is no specific timeline you know that we can tell how much time it will take for each dashboard. It all depends on what kind of reports client is expecting and how much ready our environment is. So when I say environment is ready, our database should be ready. You know, uh, our data should be ready. Our requirements should be clear. Okay, our design 
should be clear like that. So when everything is falling into line, then the time taken to, you know, uh, create your dashboard will be less. Otherwise, will all start creating issues. So your data issues might take time. The table creation might take time. So your requirements are not getting finalized. It can take some time. Your design is not getting finalized. It can take some time. So these are all time consuming tasks. So always remember whenever you are giving number, you can you know keep this in uh, points in mind and answer the question. Okay, so that's about second question. Very important and you know often it is confusing many of our viewers here. So I wanted to stress more on that. So now what is the difference between physical layer and logical layer? So I'm saying, you know, this question is little trending these days. Okay, so logical layer and physical layer. So right from I think 2022 version, Tableau introduced this concept called as a physical layer and a logical layer here. So if I go here, you know, physical layer is the layer where the actual joins takes place. Like, you know, you are joining two tables with a some condition, all that is happening at the physical layer. So earlier, we didn't had any naming conventions to all of this, but we had the same view here, if you observe the right part here. So they have named it as a physical layer because that is the place where join is taking. But on top of this, if you're trying to bring in multiple tables or create a data model, then it is called as a logical layer here. So basically, remember two points here. If you are bringing a data source or table into a data source, you are building a data model. So that data model can be with a single table or it can be with a multiple tables. And when, we are, when you are bringing multiple tables, how are you joining? So if you are joining at the physical layer, then we use joins. Otherwise, it is relationships. Simple. Okay. So do let me know in comment section if you want me to make a detailed video on this topic because it is pretty, you know, large topic. We would need one complete video to understand uh, you know, how this works in detail. Now let us get back to our next question here. The difference between index and rank, both are very different. Index is simple like generating a number or like you know row number based on the number of records that you have for that particular dimension or measure it will generate the number rank means with specific to your measure that you are specifying it will rank and it will give the number so again rank is again categorized into four types here tenth rank unique rank all of that so you have to talk about that when rank is uh, asked. Index means it is a simple number, a row number we can call it as, okay? So what is context filter? I think we have uh, you know, discussed this in our previous video where we talked about cascading filter and context filter. Do watch that video, it is very helpful. Next is difference between heat map and trim map. Again, often very confusing questions for many. So if you see here, Tree map helps us in displaying hierarchical hierarchical data. Okay. Whereas heat map is a two dimensional representation of data, which helps us in understanding a lot of information here. So this tree map helps when you have a lot of hierarchical or categorical data. So it is basically in triangles. Okay. So based on your value, the size of triangle will change but that's the typical structure of a uh, you know, tree map next is difference between individual and blended axis here individual axis means like so it is basic uh, question uh, based on you know if you are trying to merge two different measures together then it becomes a blended axis and if you are using a single measure and you are trying to use an axis that is your individual axis so like say i have sum of sales and sum of profit so one axis for sum of sales and one axis for a uh, sum of profit. So these are all individual axis, but when I merge them together to form a blend or you know use a common axis that becomes your blended axis. 
So like how we, you know, do a dual axis and use it. Okay. So what is a calculated field? Calculated field is nothing but a derived field we are using on top of any existing field or you are trying to create a new calculation for all that purpose we are uh, it is called as calculated field so if at all you want to search you know the derived fields in your tableau you can simply click on you know a c colon and it will show you the derived fields that are available in your dashboard or in your worksheet like say here you have uh, and it can be understood by equal to operator here all the derived fields will start with equal to indicating it is you know editable or it is derived whereas your fields that are coming from the database will not have equal to operator and they are non editable see your customer name if i click on that there is no edit option here but if i click on this string function there is edit option here I can edit and see what I have done or what is the formula that I have written. Okay. So that is your calculated field. Now let us go to SQL questions that were asked. So do you follow any scrum order or, you know, the model? So we can talk here. We can talk about, you know, how, what is your process model, like agile methodology you are following or waterfall model or you know any scrum meetings do you have so about that you can talk about in this question next is you know the count what is the difference between count star and count of column what is the main difference between it okay so to explain that what i'm doing is i'm taking you to my sql screen here so i'm just running a query here first select star from emp and i have got 14 records here if you see 14 rows in this okay now to show you the difference of each of them i am trying to run three, uh, three things here select a count of star okay comma and uh, now i am running count of column name here and i am taking e name as an example and i am also taking count of commission from emp so if you take if you see one is count star i have taken another one is one specific column and another one is also specific column because commission column has some nulls here if you observe see here it does not have records for every field so that is why i've taken it to show you the difference i'm running this now see here so generally count star will give you the total records that are available in the table so your count of column name will also give the number of records available in that particular column or it can so if there are no nulls in that then it will the count star will be equal to your count of column but assume if there are any nulls in your specific field that you are specifying then tableau will not count that see here when i have taken count of commission here we have one two three and four so we have got four records that's the count is showing that so that is the difference between this so you have to remember this difference whenever you are trying to answer the question so i'm going to next here uh, so the this question is also same i have 10 rows and three columns what is the difference between count star and count columns so you can answer the question accordingly now group by clause so generally group by means uh, you know aggregating at the dimension that you are specifying simply so see here observe uh, when i selected select star from emp i am just displaying the entire records in my table right so i'm not aggregating anything but observe here i have department 10 30 10 20 that's it so if you observe this column the unique departments i have are 10 20 30 now if i want to aggregate that at a department level select department number and i want to see total salaries of them so i'm doing a sum here so which means i'm aggregating from employee okay group by department i'm doing so if i simply run this Hmm. 
So it is giving me total salaries for each department here. Okay. So we are aggregating at a department level to get the total salaries for each department. So that is the group by. Now next is what is difference between where clause and having clause. Again, two important questions here. So where clause means generally it is applied or it comes after your from statement. The first thing that comes is where and it is on an individual level. So you're not applying that on a group filter. Whereas having comes on aggregated field only. Like say here, select star from EMP where department number is equal to 20. Then what am I doing here? I'm not aggregating anything, but still I'm showing or displaying the data only for my department 20 here only here. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to select department number comma sum of salary from EMP group by department number. Okay, having sum of salary greater than uh, like say 9400. If I run this. maybe you know some error in this but it should only display this this value here generally so i'm aggregating or filtering only on this value okay so that's about you know having and where clause so while joining we will use on and where what is the difference here so generally while while we are joining or using a join statement on is used to specify on which column you are going to join whereas where is actually kind of filter statement where we specify on which field we want to filter like that okay so now when we join two tables without a condition or without a common column what happens so generally the records will get multiplied here and it will form like a Cartesian product. So to show you that again, uh, I have two tables here, select star from EMP. You see, I've got 14 rows here. And again, what I'm doing is I have another table called as department here. Select star from department, okay. And in this, I have got only four records, if you see. Okay. Now what I'm doing is select star from EMP comma department. So without anything, I'm just calling those two. Now, how many records did it return? It returned 56 rows. So how did I get, uh, if I open my calculator and search here. So I've got 14 into four basically that is what it did which means for each record of a department every record of employee table is getting added so that is how you are getting 56 records okay so that's about uh where did you go here so that's about seventh and eighth question cartesian uh, join means for every record of a table a you will have the records multiplied with number of tables like say one table I have got two records and another table I have got three records. Then my total records after quotation product will be two into three, which is equal to six. Simple. Okay. So that is your quotation product. So that's it from my side in this video. I hope you find this video useful. If it does, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.